Our next example is a participle that actually comes after the noun. So if you think about what happens on the front of this worksheet, the participle is supposed to be in front of the noun. A participial phrase comes after the noun. But sometimes you can have a participle all by himself after the noun, just like an adjective. So like number three, advanced grammar, usually boring, turned obscure yet intriguing with the addition of a Mexican pinata. There's actually a couple of different interesting things going on here. I have a, right here, I have a participle, advanced, in front of the noun, grammar. I have a participle afterward, boring, which is also describing grammar. And then we're going to find that intriguing is going to be also intriguing. I mean, seriously, that was a great setup. Anyway, let's build this one. I can see that if you build it somewhat in the, let's do in the middle. How about that? Let me just erase what I just did. A little bit more in the middle of your white space, everybody. All right, so I know that I'm going to have grammar here. If you want to treat advanced grammar as all one big name, you can. But I love the power of the participle, so I'm going to build my participle right here. The reason we're bending that is because, remember, it's the verb to advance. So it's in a participle form, so I get to bend it to the line. This is advanced. It's part adjective, part verb. So advanced grammar, and then here's my other word describing it, which is boring. So just like I use the word old and stubborn for my last sentence, I'm using boring for this one. And it comes from the verb to bore. So therefore, I have to bend it like a participle. And it's usually boring. Well, usually is an adverb. And so an adverb modifying this word. I'm going to build that adverb off the verb side. So I'm going to say it's usually boring. And then I have my main verb, which is turned. And this is not a physical turn. This is like a, a linking verb turn. It's like grammar became. And so I'm going to slant my line. And then I realize there's two things describing it. So up on a tree and then down here. I said up on a tree. What am I talking about? Um, I'm splitting this. So here's this word, yet. Up here is the word obscure. And normally I would just have put the word intriguing right here. But think about it. I can't really put the word intriguing right here on the line. This is a place for adjectives. Well, obscure is an adjective, but intriguing is not really an adjective. Intriguing is a participle. So I have to make them look like a participle. Remember, a participle is down and over. So I have to kind of make them look down and over. So I get to put it up on a tree. I got to make it look like a participle. Look at that. Isn't that cool? We never really talked about that, but a participle can be anywhere an adjective wants to be. And some adjectives are predicate adjectives. And that's what we have here, an adjective up on the main line. And so therefore, I'm going to say intriguing because it comes from the verb to intrigue. It's a participle. And then I have, lastly, with the addition of a Mexican piñata. You could say it turned with the addition of a Mexican piñata, and or you could say it's obscure and intriguing with the addition. So if I go with turned, I'm going to build off turned. If I go off um, these two, obscure and intriguing, I'm going to have to build off the nub. I have a little more underneath turned, so I'm going to build underneath turned, and I'm just going to get crazy and go Christmas colors on you. All right, so I'm going to come down with with. That is the worst line ever. What is wrong with me? Like, you're, I know you're thinking like at that point, was there possibly a, an earth shake? What is an earth shake, Jeffrey? An earthquake. <laughs> oh my gosh. An earth shake. Seriously. Uh, I am the least intelligent person in this class right now. There we go. Pinata. Little tilde. Don't forget that. It's important. So the addition of piñata, the piñ a piñata, and then Mexican. Well, just like I flattened the word Chinese before, I'm going to flatten Mexican. And there we go. Hey, that's pretty cool. So we are focusing really just on this thing here, which is our uh, post-noun participle. But we ended up having a really cool thing here um, with that participle up on a tree. And a tilde, you know. So let's not disregard the power of the tilde. There you go. One more to go.